ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another educational commentary for those of you guys new here basically what i do is i commentate everything that i am doing everything that i'm thinking about so that you guys can see the consistencies across all my gameplay so today we are playing in silver four to silver one wide range there uh, in the silver elos uh, this account will be dedicated for ad carry moving forward so we're gonna have to play a couple adc games before it starts getting a bit higher mmr um, and then from there we'll start getting into diamond and master tier games so we are playing Vayne ad carry a role that i think is very barbaric for Vayne, even though that's where she originated from because when you play adc Vayne, the games are so wild they're just all over the place no consistency but here we are we are going to be building storm razor this game into uh, what was the build storm razor into something don't worry we'll figure it out so when it comes to the wave management there's no like stacking or anything uh, there is if you can control the wave but because we got a kill i had to base and we didn't get access to the wave so here we are, we're getting pushed in. It is what it is, but that's fine. When it comes to the runes, we ran Fleet of Footwork. Uh, all we did was very simple. We went to u.gg and we searched up the meta vein build. And then we just copied it. The one with Fleet of Footwork. Although when it comes to vein ADC, I do think you should run the same build as vein top. If you're playing a front to back style. If you're playing an assassination style, you should look to run a weird build like Storm Razor, like I'm about to go, or Lethality or something. Oh, okay. And then yeah, we decided to run Taste of Blood to keep it OG, and then we went Eyeball Collection because I don't like Treasure Hunter. Bring Ravenous Hunter back, right games, we missed it. Even though they nerfed it a lot before they removed it like two years ago. But if you guys are new here, what front to back basically means is you kill whatever is in front of you, which is normally their tanks and their front line, and you work your way to their back line. Hence the name front to back. But if you're playing an assassination style, you're kind of all over the place, so then you can build more wildly. Oh no. Into the wall you go. Oh, you're dead. Ooh, okay, very nice. So right there, there's a couple quick little opportunities to land auto cues, And then in Jinx's case, since she was really low, I eat her into the wall too. So, unfortunate for the enemy team, but here we go. Let's grab Storm Razor. Let's get some nice juicy damage incoming here. Okay, and we got our refillable potion too, so we're absolutely vibing. Goodbye. Who was that one guy who made Varus top popular? Was it a pro player or was it a streamer? And then all of a sudden, a bunch of people hopped on the bandwagon. And then now there's a bunch of people just doing Varus top. And then AP, I think, too, in particular. So then I threw in that little twist. It was like a year ago when it happened. But anyways, regardless, back into the game. The wave is bouncing towards us. So what we're going to do here is shave the wave as much as we can. Oh, never mind. We landed our ability. So we just kill him. And right there, I winded up my E, if in case. Uh, I didn't kill her with that auto, which probably won't happen because I, I had a lot of damage there. And we're just going to simply push the wave and start taking the tower. Nico made a really good play there where she went invisible as a melee minion. Not invisible, but she, she transformed into a melee minion and tricked the enemy into thinking that she was a regular minion and then caught an E. Really it. Oh no, never mind. Oh, I'm trolling. Okay. Oh! Okay. Okay, very well played on Nico's part, not gonna lie. But yeah. So right now in this particular game, aside from auto queuing early game, like the thing is, is when you play in silver, a lot of times the way that your opponent plays 
If it doesn't match up to what the regular standard should be, you should normally just end up winning as long as you're holding your fundamentals. So for example, right? When Jinx is trying to last at a minion in the early game, she would walk up to the minion, but then all I would do, since I had no job, was just auto her. Tumble, and then auto her again. And then in most cases, I would out-trade her because you can't really stand in a position where a Vayne is auto uh, autoing you, queuing, and then autoing you again, and Vayne is already in position to land a third auto without having to work for it by walking forward and getting hit by abilities. And off of just enemy mistakes alone and not playing how you're supposed to play, you can get a lot of free damage and even angles where you can run down your opponents in elos all the way up to like even platinum. That's the biggest thing. But again, obviously, right? You have to get to a point where you're able to identify when that's happening. And then after that, even when you identify it, can you execute upon it well, right? Because just because someone's walking in range for you to land all those things, doesn't mean it's just free. Because you can end up going forward and then still end up getting hit by every ability in the game. And then you're dead, right? So you still have to be mindful of what your opponents can do to you. Hence, going back to the concept that I always teach people, zone of influence. Which is the concept where you look at uh, the ranges where people can impact you, right? So against Seraphine right there, I already drew her zone of influence when she got near me, right? I drew her Q, I drew her E from her angle, how long it would take for it to reach me, how wide the ability was, and how and what I can do if I decide to run towards her or where I'm currently standing. If I should tumble, if I should move to the left, and then obviously right as I see the ability, I know the end location of the ability already. Right? Right when it comes out. So then I knew I was safe, I didn't have to move anymore. So that is how you need to be thinking when you're playing League of Legends, period. If you want to play at a higher level. is Right when you get near a enemy champion, you should be drawing out everything that they can do to you. Oh my god, it's not even close. Oh my god. Goodbye, it's not even close. But right, that's a... Uh, Basically, the gist of this game is taking advantage of your opponent's <coughs> mistakes. And obviously, you have to be able to identify that mistake. And then wave management, we didn't talk about at all, but there's no, there's not really any wave management going on in this game. It's just we push the wave and then we kill them. Although I will say, though, at a higher level, wave management does matter, uh, very similarly to top lane. Oh my god. See right there? Like, why would you step over? Seraphine E in a second, right? Yeah, there you go. Oh, I didn't juke it. Because I was moving towards her. And since I'm moving towards her, I am moving towards her ability, which means it's harder to dodge. That brand took forever to do that. Is there a Kha'Zix in here? He flashed. Very nice. Alright, we'll simply take our base here and we should be good. This game, however, I will say is absolutely doomed for the enemy team if mid lane is also winning too on our side. Okay, next item on the chopping block. We will be going, I believe it was Essence Reaver based on memory now. Essence Reaver. And the point of this build is you are trying to burst people. You auto them and I believe you get, you get movement speed and then you hit them with the Essence Reaver damage where you just like pop them. And if you decide to open with Q first, you'll get the Sheen proc from Essence Reaver and the movement speed buff immediately. You get like a massive damage outburst all at once. And I guess you could say because you're running Triumph, the Essence Reaver will heal your mana, I believe. Yep, will heal your mana. So right here, we're gonna do the invisibility engage where we alt Q out, out of sight. She should die here. As long as she doesn't trap the bush, I should be fine. Oh shit. Oh no, I trolled that. Oh my god. Why did Jinx run that way? Goodbye. Alright. Not bad overall, not terrible. Mordekaiser gets the nice catch a nice juicy wave and I'll be heading top lane here because why would I go bot lane when Mordekaiser is catching the wave already? On top of that, when I run top lane, after I kill uh, Varus, I can take this plating potentially, which is more money into my pockets. 
So the biggest thing when I run at this Varus is going to be flashing his ultimate. So I need to make sure I heavily focus on that if he decides to walk up here. Auto for movement speed. Flash his ultimate. I think if he kept running, I would have been forced to tank two tower shots, which means he has a chance to turn on me there. In that situation, the mistake that Varus made was not leaving the minions a lot sooner right when he saw me. I think he delayed for one second. That's why he ended up dying. Aside from that, if you're playing Varus and you know someone has probably has flash, you should probably ult and then ult in a weird way where uh, you might hit their flash positioning. But that's really up to you. The danger about doing that is if they don't actually have flash, then you look like an- oh shit. Hey, very nice. Jinx Alt will kill me though if I gave her that. Ooh, is the Zerith here? There is a Zerith here. I don't think Jinx Alt will kill me anymore now with this HP, so we're good. What the? Oh, we missed everything. Wait, why isn't this dead? Oh, this guy's committed. Holy smokes. He popped you moves. I think I heard a flash too? Or was that this guy's flash? I don't know, but... That was commitment. Alright, next up on the chopping block, after Essence Reaver. I believe the item here to go is Exoidic or something? Exotic? It starts with an E. This one? No, it's this one. This one. No, what's the item called? Volatile. There you go. This item right here. Voltaic? Cyclo sword. Like, I said this on a previous video before too. I was like, what the hell do people call this item? I believe no one commented on it, but do, like, like, what's the term, right? Like Infinity Edge, everyone just says IE, right? No one says the entire thing. Bloodthirster, people just say BT, right? Rapid Fire Cannon, people just say Rapid Fire, right? Or THE Collector, people just say Collector. What the hell do you say for Voltaic Cyclo Sword? Do you say, hey guys, I'm going Cyclo Sword. Like, what? Like, that sounds so weird. Why would you say that? But alright, we're going top lane here because that's someone bot lane just now and does a lot of people mid. I didn't feel like helping with Herald, so we're just gonna push top and wait until someone comes and tries to kill me, which is probably gonna be Kha'Zix. And Jinx is my guess. And we should be fine when they jump on us. All you have to do is kite back, go invisible, and then when they j uh, after that, chase forward. I turned on target champions only to auto one of these minions for Storm Razor, and then target champions on was on, so I couldn't hit the minion to get Storm Razor to dodge that. I'm so bad. No, it's okay. Funnily enough, the only reason I was able to do that is because I had Triumph. If you don't have Triumph, you can't do stuff like that a lot of times, because you'll end up just getting mana back, and then like, what the hell does mana do for you, right? In a situation like that. But because we're playing ADC Vayne, we have access to these opportunities because you just you run weird ruins when you're playing ADC. I will say this though, presence of, presence of mind on ADC is kind of odd to run because you're not constantly autoing someone and then wasting mana to escape like you are in main top lane. You're more so just committing forward everything that you got. That's why you tend to notice after a Vayne wins in bot lane that they have literally no mana left because once you use like three tumbles and an E, your mana bar is gone.
But alright, let's continue pushing and just end this game and try to keep it clean. Keep it clean. I do have double sums now, just saying. Alright, so let's just take an inhibitor and then if they decide to go on me, I'm gonna pop everything and just kill them. But I think they're all AFK, I feel like. Let's base and grab Voltaic Cyclosword and watch the pop. So here's the thing, it's called the pop, that's what we're gonna call it. So the pop is when we're gonna have Essence Reaver deal additional damage. Storm Razor deals damage on the first hit when you're energized and Voltaic Cyclosword deals damage. You get movement speed from Storm Razor and you get slow on your opponents from Voltaic Cyclosword. So not only do you slow them, you also move faster. So let's see this one auto right here. No, why'd you TP in? You scared him away. He's going downwards. Oh, we got juke. One auto? Oof. Oh, that, I misclicked the ultimate. That is a misclick, ladies and gentlemen. I don't want to pay the price for it, please. Alright, let's see the damage in one pop. That was okay damage. No! Dude, I'm so sad I popped my ultimate as a misclick when I was killing Kha'Zix. I needed my ultimate there so badly. Very, very badly. Because if I was able to go invisible, I would have obviously dove directly, not directly, to the side to, uh, over here to kill Varus. And then I'd be able to continue to keep going invisible while I dealt with Jinx. But, hey, misclick, pressed it. You pay the price, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, next up on the chopping block, I believe you go you moves with this build. That was suggested to us on u.gg. Let me explain the problem with this build. The problem with this build is you have a lot of damage, which is cool. But there's no like consistency output. You're kind of just like trying to burst everyone at the uh, at the start and then go from there. On top of that, you don't really have lifesteal until you build BT if you want to at 5th or 6th item. Uh, your only lifesteal that you're depending on is your taste of blood if you decide to go it. Or your fleet of footwork. That's really it. So all you're trying to do is just trying to burst people as this style of Vayne. Which historically isn't what Vayne wants to do. But this is what you're going to do, end up doing with this build. And I don't really like that style of vein. I'm more of a outplay people with pure movement type of vein. And then you start um, outputting your damage once you outplay them with movement. Alright, and I think, think the game is over. Let's call that one here. And yeah, 20 kills on a Vayne ADC, playing in the silver. And we should have more of these, and then at some point the account will be higher elo for more... Huh? Dead. Okay. For more gameplay for Vayne. Ladies and gentlemen, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you guys drop a like, hit the sub button, and have a fantastic rest of your day.